The message behind feminism, at least in my perspective, seems to have shifted. What started out as a movement to advance women's rights has evolved over time with new challenges being brought to the forefront. Specifically, the prevalence of misandry, also known as hateful speech and prejudice that is directed towards men. Now, before we get into it, we first need to have an understanding of what feminism entails, how it's expanded, and what it's led to today. And while you're at it, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and turn your post notifications on for more content. So first things first, what is feminism? Feminism is a social, political, and cultural movement that advocates for the rights of women in various areas of society, such as politics, economics, education, and personal autonomy. And since its inception, feminism has evolved through four different waves, each with its own focus and goals. And I want to take a moment to kind of dissect each of them. So the first wave of feminism began in the late 19th to early 20th century. Its main focus was on legal issues, particularly women's right to vote, and activists sought to address property rights and access to education. Key achievements during this period included the Seneca Falls Convention in 1848 and the passage of the 19th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution in 1920. Now, the Seneca Falls Convention basically produced the Declaration of Sentiments, which was a document that outlined the grievances and called for equal rights. So this included the right to vote, the right of married women to own their own property, have custody of their children, keep their own wages, and more. Now, I will say that while the passage of the 19th Amendment was a milestone that granted women the right to participate in the democratic process, it did not automatically ensure full voting rights for all women, particularly women of color. And it wasn't until the Voting Rights Act was passed in 1965 that all women were granted this right. The second wave of feminism emerged between the 1960s to the 1980s. Second wave feminists advocated for reproductive rights, workplace equality, and an end to gender-based discrimination. This wave also included discussions about sexuality and the role of women in the family, advocating that women should not be confined to only being a housewife, that they were capable of also having a career and working in the workforce. This second wave achieved significant gains, including the introduction of the birth control pill. Roe v. Wade protected a woman's right to have an abortion and their increased awareness of workplace discrimination. So just to give an example, the Equal Pay Act of 1963 was signed into law and new legislation stated that women could no longer be paid less than men for doing the same work. The third wave of feminism emerged between the 1990s to early 2000s and was characterized by increased diversity with a focus on intersectionality. So intersectionality was coined by Kimberly Crenshaw, I believe her last name was, and it basically stated that as individuals, we each have unique attributes and characteristics that make us who we are. Just to give an example, I am not just a woman. I am a heterosexual woman who has brown skin. I speak English, Spanish, and broken English, and these are just a few of my social identities. Social identities can be race, gender, sexual orientation, socioeconomic status, language, etc. And it's within these social identities that each of us have that shape our experiences with oppression and privilege. So third wave feminists basically sought to deconstruct these gender norms, challenge stereotypes, and contributed to greater inclusivity within the feminist movement by emphasizing the importance of recognizing and respecting diverse experiences and perspectives. And finally, the fourth wave of feminism, also known as modern day feminism, is where we're currently at from the 2000s to the present. This wave has been marked by social media for organizing and amplifying voices. Issues such as sexual harassment, body shaming, rape culture, online harassment, the Me Too movement, reproductive justice, and gender identity have been prominent in fourth wave discussions. Now, going back to what I was saying in the beginning, while major milestones have been accomplished within the feminist movement as a whole, new challenges have been brought to the forefront. Specifically, the rhetoric that is now being used within the modern day feminism. On social media and in society, there has been a prevalence of hateful speech and prejudice that is directed towards men. 
This is known as misandry, the opposite of misogyny, and it has resulted in extreme expressions of hostility towards men. Some common phrases that are being perpetuated include the saying, men, they're not it. Men are incapable of understanding women's experiences. Men are the abusers. They are the ones who are violent. They are inherently aggressive. I've heard people say, we don't need men. They only cause problems. Men are the root of all societal problems and more. Now, I do want to note that this does not represent the views of all feminists, right? However, it is something that I recognize is becoming normalized in everyday language, in the workplace that I'm in, also within my friend groups and society as a whole. So the question now is why? Why is hating men a trending topic of discussion? Well, I believe this is largely due to the narrative that is being presented in society, which is the belief that to this day, women in the United States continue to be oppressed. And I guess you have to ask yourself, is this true? As a gender, are women really oppressed in the US society we live in today? Well, the answer to these questions are subjective because there are many dissenting views. There are many women who will say that I am not oppressed. As a woman, my gender has not stopped me from accomplishing anything that I set out to do. In fact, there are policies, laws, and regulations that are in place that help me advance in my career, that help me as a mother. And these are individuals who will highlight empowerment, resilience, and resources that have helped them achieve success both professionally and personally. Now, on the other hand, there are women who will completely disagree with this narrative, right? They will say, Yes, women today are oppressed in the United States because there are still systematic and unjust treatment and discrimination women face based on their gender. And the arguments that usually follow this train of thought talk a lot about the wage gap between men and women. It talks about intersectionality and that there are certain communities of women that face more discrimination than others. It talks about the glass ceiling, it talks about women's experience with high rates of sexual harassment and assault, it also talks about losing bodily autonomy after Roe v. Wade was overturned and more. And it is within these arguments that, you know, research has said and I found that have led to misandry where strong language is being used to attack all men. The perception of ongoing oppression against women has alienated men from the feminist cause. And it is counterintuitive in addressing gender-based discrimination because it stereotypes men in a negative way. The videos that I've been seeing on the internet and even hearing about in the workplace seem to be creating divisions within the feminist movement because they assume that all men are misogynists. And it has even caused many men, both personally and professionally, to not approach a woman because they fear a sexual harassment allegation or even the fear of being canceled. And I actually did post a video about is catcalling a form of sexual harassment on my channel. So if you are curious about that, go ahead and watch it. It is going to be right up there. So the question that I want to kind of move in now is I want to hear your thoughts and opinions. So my questions for you are, do you believe as a gender that women are oppressed in the United States? Why or why not? And if you do, do you think that misandry, which is hateful speech towards men, is the best way to address this oppression? Let me know what you think in the comments below. I want to see where your head is at with this entire, you know, modern day feminism and the fourth wave. And if you completely disagree with me, also let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, once again, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and turn your post notifications on. And I will see you very soon with a new video. Thank you so much. Bye.